So today we're going to get down to what people really want to know, which is how you interpret things. I'm going to start showing you examples of how to interpret various shapes that form between the planets when you put two charts together. What we discussed so far is that planets will form certain shapes by virtue of the signs that they're in relative to one another in two people's charts, across two charts. So that's the first thing that you want to do when you're analyzing the relationship between two people. You put their charts together and you look for these shapes. You're going to find dozens of shapes because practically every planet, actually literally every planet, is going to make some kind of shape with every other planet. So the second step to do is to weight the intensity of the shape. We discussed how to do that in the previous video. Brief summary, it's done by seeing how exactly the degrees conform to that specific shape. Now for the new stuff, the new stuff is about how you interpret. So let's get into that now. How do you interpret these various shapes formed between various planets? Now first, I want to make a really important point. Interpretations are very sensitive and every individual will have a slightly different interpretation even of basically the same thing because their lives are different than other people who had the same thing their history their time period their gender may be different their race may be different their rest of the things in their chart may be different the way i do my reports whether they're the birth chart report or the compatibility report I do my best to word the interpretations in such a way has to give you the ammunition, the symbolic ammunition that you need to be able to contemplate and figure out exactly what the interpretation means to you. Interpretations don't come out of an envelope or they don't come out of a little box that you buy in an astrology store. They're living things that really take root and grow in your mind and get comprehended by the person more than the astrologer. The astrology gives the seed of the interpretation to the client or the native but it does that seed takes root in the native's heart and mind and grows there so now that you understand that let's talk about some interpretations i'll give you some basic ways that i would generically out of the box unpack various interpretations what we are focusing on right now is synastric geometry so we're looking at the shapes formed by planets across two charts between two charts It'll be easy for you to learn how to do this if you break it into two steps. The first step of the interpretation is that it's dependent on the shape, and that's the foundation of the interpretation. The second step in the interpretation is the specific planets or points involved. If you're interpreting squares between one person's Mars and another person's Moon, you first start with the fact that it's a square, so that gives you a point of view that you're interpreting something which is a clash or conflict and then you add the specificities of the planets in. That it's a conflict between one person's, say, ambition and individuality from the Mars with, their, with the other person's subjectivity and feeling and emotions from the Moon. For today, let's try to be a little specific and let's look at Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. The most significant shape formed in this chart, the shape that has the highest alignment intensity, is the pole formed between Goldie's Ketu and Kurt's Ascendant. Now the way I lay out the ammunition, so to speak, the symbolic ammunition for this couple to understand what this means to them is like, like this, like you see on the screen. First of all, the shape itself, being a pole, is characterized as dissimilarity as an asset. So it's positive dissimilarity, which you could um, summarize in the phrase opposites attract. Now, the specific planets involved are K2 and Ascendant, right? So I say this opposites attract dynamic is rooted in how Kurt Russell's Ascendant interacts with Goldie's K2. So then I give some of the key words for Ascendant, most carefully chosen words to really get you to the heart of what the Ascendant signifies and what K2 signifies in such a way that you would be able to customize it to yourself. So the ascendant signifies realities. And a cup and I give four other words for it. The body, the location, a person's schedules and habits and their practicalities. Whereas K2, K2 signifies depths. So depths means like looking 
the stuff that's inside, the stuff that's deep down inside you. So introversion, intensification, and looking within spirituality, psychology, those type of things. So what's going on with Kurt and Goldie is that their ascendant, Kurt's ascendant and Goldie's K2 are very strongly related. So you know there's some going to be some dynamic between her psychology or spirituality or innerness, her K2, with his outerness, with his, with his body, with his practicality. And what's the relationship going to be? It's a pole. So it's going to be how these are really opposite but it is that very oppositeness which makes it click so hard like two magnets of opposite poles pulling on each other so if i were to explain it to them in like a little more detail maybe in a written form or i wasn't really speaking to them directly i'd probably say something like all right goldie so your quote unquote spirituality like your whole thing about who you are inside and your spiritual outlook and psychology your psychological nature all the deep things about you it's very different from this guy Russell from the way he looks from the way he lives all the practicalities in his life but the way you are inside that difference to the way that he is outside is actually causes him to crave what you are on the inside and needs what you are. So what he's what's going to happen is this K2 of Goldie Hawn is going to give depth. So it's going to give depth and meaning and significance to ordinary things. And it also is going to ground or concretize her inner self, her inner thoughts, her psychology is going to get grounded and concretized in this man. The way that he looks and everything is very different than the way that she is inside. But that's the part about him that fulfills what, exactly what she needs. Okay, so that is an example of how to basically interpret the pole formed between one person's ascendant and another person's K2. Now let's look at the same combination of planets K2 and ascendant, but with different shapes. So what if, instead of being a pole, if they were in the same sign? Now what's interesting with, with K2 specifically is that the pole is also a same sign thing. Because wherever K2 is, Rahu is going to be on the other side. And wherever Rahu is, K2 is going to be on the other side. So K2 and Rahu in poles are very, very compelling. So when one planet forms a polarity with K2 and Rahu in another person's chart, people are not even going to be able to say no to this relationship. They're, they're, there's going to be so much of a clicking and a needing of each other. But if K2 were on the same sign as his ascendant, I would slightly change the interpretation so that now now the shape of being in the same sign is just that things are so so much the same so there's no question about understanding he would just comprehend her psychology because her psychology is basically the way that he exists on his outside the nature of her psychology is the same thing as the nature of how he presents himself to the world now if we had a trine here with K2 and the Ascendant. The same two planets are involved, but we're just going to adjust the interpretation based on the shape being different. So trines are like very supportive. So I would say something like her spirituality is, is just in tune with the way he looks, the way he lives, etc. The two are in tune with each other. So let's give some basic examples for the other shapes too. So a semi-trine is a quieter trine. So instead of being like very nourishing and very clicky, it's going to be a more unconscious. They don't even really know about it so much themselves. The trying, people, when you have trying alignments with a partner, you're very aware of the fact that you have that. It's something that's obvious in the relationship that goes well together. When you have semi-trines, you're not really aware of it until somebody points it out. That, you know, you guys are really compatible on this point. Or you guys really support each other a lot in this particular way so if if Russell and Goldie's um, I love referring to these people by first name if their K2 and Venus were semi-trying then it would be more like an unconscious clicking between the depth Goldie's psychological depths and Kurt's 
tech, tangible, practical reality of who he is. So you see this part about tangible, practical reality of Kurt and psychological depths of Goli, that's a constant in all these interpretations because we're always dealing with the way K2 is going to interact with the Ascendant. Now, what the shape thing takes resolves in the interpretation is how do they interact with each other? Does K2 interact with the Ascendant in a negative way, in a positive way? What type of way? That's determined by the shape. So if it's a pole, then it's like, wow, this is really new to me, and that's exactly what I need. If it's the sameness, it's like, wow, my practical life and her psychological nature is exactly the same. And this easy. If it's a trine, it's like, well, we're slightly different in our my the way that I look and everything is slightly different than the way that she feels and thinks and introspects. But it's very compatible to each other and it we support each other with that. If it's a semi-trine, it's the same thing happens, but it's not so obvious. It's more in the background of the relationship. Now let's bring in the semi-semi-trine, which is if the two planets are in neighboring signs. On either side, two or twelve signs apart. So here we, is where you start to get to negative shapes. So for example, if it's two and twelve, the nature of the shape is like quiet misunderstanding and detraction. Her psychology, her mentality, her spirituality would drain his physical health, his physical vitality, his physical enthusiasm. It wouldn't be an obvious or an extreme drain, but it would be a quiet, constant drain. And the couple wouldn't really be aware of it until you point it out. And the cause of the drain would be that he just can't comprehend can't see. That's the nature of that shape. So you can't really see well to that angle. It, you just can't really see her psychology f for what it is. And she can't really see what he really is physically. Now that shape, semi-semi-trine, isn't particularly bad, but a little bit worse than that is a quincunx, which is to be six or eight signs, which are also regarded as blind spots. Here you're going to get a more noticeable lack of comprehension. Same deal as with the semi-semi-trine, 2 and 12, but it's more pronounced now when it's 6 and 8. So when the Ascendant and K2 are 6 and 8 apart, it's very difficult to comprehend. There's going to be frequent misunderstandings on these points. He's going to feel that way, that she's not even noticing my tangible assets. She's going to feel that he doesn't even recognize my inner being. And that's going to cause a lot of conflict. And now the final shape, the worst one is the square. So this is characterized as a clash, and it's an open clash. So it's just where they're just too different. So if it's a clash between K2 and Ascendant, then it's going to be, this guy's practical practicality is so different from her psychological values that they're going to clash on this point and always argue about it. So that should give you an example, one example, the starting example of how you would interpret synastric shapes, including the, the planets that are involved in those shapes. So what we did this time was we took one set of planets, K2 and Ascendant, we'll call the Ascendant a planet for simplicity's sake, and we looked at example interpretations of it in various shapes. Particularly for, for Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell, they have it as a polarity and as their most significant shape between their two charts. So this is really the, the main deal about this relationship. Interestingly enough, the other couple that I prepared to use examples from, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson, they also have the same Ascendant to K2 pole as their most prominent feature in their synastric charts. So that's enough for this week. Next week, let's look at another combination of planets and explore the interpretations for that combination under various shapes. So stick around and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss all this good stuff. Thanks so much.